right, morning. So here we are at Binbrook, and probably for the first time in maybe 50 years, there is a Gloucester Javelin next to an English Electric Lightning. And it gives you a good impression of just how different the aeroplanes are. So the Javelin, with its radar at the front, um, <clears throat> two-man aeroplane, so a pilot in the front, navigator in the back, and the difference is clearly in the between technology where the Lightning had its engines stacked one above another, the Javelin has its engines side by side. And you can see how small the radar on the Lightning is compared to this huge radar on the Javelin. So this particular uh, Javelin, which came from the Jet Aviation Museum in Gloucestershire, uh, was a very unique aeroplane, never saw RAF service, and was a prototype and uh, test aeroplane. So the radar that was in here had a big pitot probe on originally. Um, I would imagine probably never had anything fitted inside there, and I wouldn't know how you take that radar off. Whereas the Lightning was quite simple. You just slotted the radar in and out on a special um, gantry system. The Javelin had an American radar that wasn't gyro-stabilized, and that important factor is that the Lightning's radar is gyro-stabilized. So whenever the airplane turns like that to the left or right, the radar stays relative to the horizon. Whereas in the Javelin, the radar would move with it, which made the job for the guy in the back who operated the radar very difficult. Uh, other differences, Lightning's got this big refueling probe. Javelin had no refueling probe initially, but then eventually they did put a very similar thing on the right hand, uh, sorry, I think it's on the left hand side, like a great big lance, um, fitted as an afterthought to the Javelin. Moving further back, you've got the pilot sitting at the front, sitting very high, and we're not far off, if it was sat in its undercarriage, how it'd be sat on the ground. So a really huge aeroplane. Great big intakes, I think, these are made of metal, not wood, uh, like the Meteor. Great big uh, fuselage here to carry the two engines. Uh, to high T tailplane at the back there, which made the aircraft very unpleasant from a pilot's point of view. Couldn't do any loop-to-loops, uh, couldn't do any uh, sort of <coughs> aggressive combat maneuvering or go into a flat spin. One of the aircraft that um, the British made in the 50s as well, but was never exported, so not a great success. Um, and I think probably after the Meteor, the Gloucester Javelin was probably one of the last fighters that the Gloucester aircraft actually made. It looks impressive, it's very big. Um, it used to make a very strange whining noise when it was flying. And you can see just how huge the wing mounting is with these two mounting bolts here and here and further back. Um, just how big and cumbersome this is for a jet fighter compared to a beautiful Lightning. In terms of uh, operational service, the last one flew in around about 6970. Um, but they've been withdrawn from operational service sort of 1968 or so. So they were only in service for 10 years or so and they weren't very popular or they weren't very um, successful either. Like the Lightning, which uh, could carry two fire streak missiles here, or one on either side or a fire streak or red top, Javelin was the same when the wings are fitted. They would carry four fire streak missiles on the wings, not on the fuselage. And I think uh, some of the versions had a, a 30 millimeter cannon as well but a very unsuccessful and very much unloved uh, British fighter from the Cold War era. But this particular aeroplane, which is the only surviving Mark IV Javelin in the world, is a unique aeroplane and it is back to Bimbrook where they had um, Javelins in the early 60s for with 64 squadron. So it's come to a good place and eventually it'll be restored and uh, it's gonna look fantastic outside the SHQ, I'd imagine.